Well, hello, I am here with Angus and Simon. Sorry. Uh, so, <laughs> it's just as well, because I was taking a big old glug yeah. of water there. And James. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Anyways, hello, thank you for both, uh, both of you for coming to sit with me in your set. <laughs> well, before we crack on with the questions about Time Fracture specifically, I want to talk about immersive theatre as, as it is, because it is a strange beast in comparison to normal theatre. So how would you best describe immersive theatre? Mm. Who wants to take it? Do you want to go for a uh, Yeah, sure. Well, it, it sort of depends on what immersive production you are, you're watching, because there's all sorts of different ways of doing it. You know, there can be immersive theatre that is, like this is, is very narrative structured and you are following a, a clear thread that might splinter off into a few different directions. Um, or there's other kind of immersive theatre, which is essentially like a like sandbox immersive, which is, I think, what secret cinema in particular are very good at. So where you would you rock up and you would explore a world and there might be missions within that world for you to do, but really it's... It's like GTA, basically, but with less <laughs> violence and cars. Um, so, so yeah, it really, there, there are so many different strands to it, and that's actually why I think it's such an exciting art form anyway, because it's, it's still quite nascent in terms of what the form has actually achieved um, theatrically. So there's still so, so much that is yet to be uncovered in what kind of stories you can tell and what you can achieve through immersive theatre. So, yeah, it's a really exciting time to be part of it. Oh, I, think, yeah, I think the allusions to stuff like GTA is interesting because, like, like, there is so much more crossover now in terms of... In, every, in all media, and all culture, there's so much more crossovers between different disciplines in the way that they didn't used to be. And so now the crossover between theatre and game design is, is, is very... Especially in this particular spectrum, is the same. Like, you look at the, a map of, say, a... Uh, a particular of an adventure game and and how you sort of algorithmically proceed through that and the map of how you create something like this and it's pretty much one to one in terms of similarity in terms of how you visualize a project like that so yeah that's terrific and getting into time fracture itself it'd be weird not to considering where we're sitting yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, how did you two get involved with time fracture James do you want to go first uh, yeah sure so, so I knew the director Tom Maller and the writer Dan from uh, a previous immersive job that I'd done which was the immersive Great Gatsby um, and we didn't work on it at the same time but we had all worked on the production at various points so we sort of knew each other and um, back in the summer of 2020 they needed someone to do the unit field logs which were on the Doctor Who YouTube channel which essentially mm. kind of functioned as a bit of a, a teaser trailer for the show and they said will you will you play a unit scientist in the trailer and I sort of extorted the part from them there I said yes I will do it if it means I can be in the actual show ah. uh, and they just sort of said well that's, that's one less actor we have to worry about at auditions <laughs> so yeah um, so that was my yeah just sort of extortion was essentially how I managed that to get my way through here. nice <laughs> unlike James I'm here on merit <laughs> 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 No, I, I just I, I auditioned. I, I think I got put up for it because um, in in the show I I play um, I play William Shakespeare and I had a little bit of Shakespeare experience and had quite a bit of improv experience and I think they they chose me based upon the fact that I could do both those things at the same time. That helps. <laughs> and that was basically it. I think it was just that was the only reason they they, they cast me. Yeah. And and I'm trying to think if is Shakespeare can I say Shakespeare? Oh, all the lights are starting to turn on. There we are. <laughs> yeah, <I'll> do that. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> What's really worrying is we're the only people here at the moment. That's just the haunted building. Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> but that's one of the most beautiful things about watching Angus is... Uh, I think we can, we can say Shakespeare. You... Yeah! Is it allowed? That's, a, that's on the publicity for the show, isn't it? I think that's on the publicity for the show. Oh, then I'm good. Yeah, no. <laughs> Shakespeare's in it. Shakespeare's in it. I think it's... Yeah, he is in it. Um, yeah, it's it's and it's and, it, and, and uh, I think I yeah I, and I like like most people I just I just auditioned and had a had a lovely audition and it's very rare that you have a lovely audition <laughs> and you and, and you and they said give us your best Shakespeare speech <laughs> and you're like finally sir ah <laughs> uh, you don't know what you've unleashed <laughs> <laughs> see it's funny I've asked everyone this question now and they've all had such different answers <laughs> the um, the first two Jess and Simon said their auditions went. Terribly, and then Sam said he had to shout at a plant for about twenty minutes, and now um, it's and you just you extorted it and you Shakespeared it. <laughs> I want to know more about sh Sam shouting yeah, at a plant. You're Sam. welcome to ask him about it because or watch the I interview. Want you to tell me. <laughs> well, from what he said. <laughs> He had to shout at a plant and, uh, as if it were a bomb at one point, or, oh, and then they, they were getting married to the plant. Oh, it would, yeah. That's amazing. I mean, talk to Sam. <laughs> that is the magic of immersive theatre. Isn't you know, it? Can, can That's not in the show, something. or maybe it is. <laughs> There's lots of bits I haven't seen yet. Yeah, can you make something out of nothing? <laughs> I think um, I just wanted to see what Sam would do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just a prank. What else can we make him do? <laughs> 
<laughs> well, uh, speaking of characters such as Shakespeare, I, I didn't know this going in, but I, uh, you can play different characters mm. during. In fact, I believe it was uh, Simon who was saying you have sort of waves of who you can play. So who are your two or more? Uh, my two, uh, my primary two are... Uh, Shakespeare and at the other end of the scale, a Cyberman. Oh, really? um, and, and I sometimes also uh, understudy uh, one of James's roles. Oh, lovely. Yes, which is Captain Stephen Davis um, <laughs> of the Torchwood Institute, Cardiff. So, for, for those of you out there who are fans of the series Torchwood, Captain Stephen Davis is in the series two episode uh, Exit Wounds. You don't actually see him, but it's that era of Torchwood, that sort of late 1800s period with um, with Emily and so forth. So yeah, it's it's you you meet Captain Stephen Davis kind of after his office has been split in two by the time fracture, mm. um, and it's been partially subsumed by should we say a more familiar iteration of Torchwood uh, and then there's also uh, Brian the Ood which is uh, those of you who are uh, there's a lot of fans of Brian right, the Ood lovely. Um, so yeah Brian the Ood is, a, is tremendous fun um, and it's yeah it's more and more people start to become aware of Brian actually having people actively seek you out and go are you Brian you know, Yes. Um, and you should well. really confuse him one day and go, no. <laughs> Not I. No. You're, <laughs> you're um, thinking of a different Uden the Tux. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's lots of us. And <laughs> so, yeah, and then I think you might have to beep these for spoilers, but I also cover... And in the next contract, I shall cover Davros as well. Ooh. Oh. I think I'm okay for Davros, but definitely can't say the other okay. one. <laughs> I wonder who he could be talking about. Definitely beat that one. Well, actually, I think you were that character when I came here, because I've only been here the once, and it was a few weeks ago, but you might have been here. It's very possible. I, I am tonight as well, so yes, ah. you'll, you, you shall definitely see me. Yes. Sam Hunt has, uh, since reco- I've been recording with him, convinced me to come tonight as well. So that he's, he's g- extorted me. <laughs> I'm, I'm paying money. Anyway. Um, so out of those characters what are the funnest to play oh I mean I, I initially thought that I, I, I certainly got the most enjoyment out of Captain Stephen Davis when I was first doing it but then the more I've done Brian the more kind of stuff I have managed to figure out and how to kind of squeeze the most fun from every kind of moment of the track because that's the really beautiful thing about this medium is you it's not just the words are written down for you in the script so much of it relies on the audience setting you up for stuff and them setting you up for stuff too. So as it goes on, you get better and better and better at working out, right, how can I make this game or this mission the most fun it can possibly be? And you change it every single night and you, it's almost like, I suppose it's almost like kind of doing, you've got more experience in the comedy world than I do, but like, I suppose it's almost like refining a, a comedy set. Like you go back and you change it's, stuff and you move stuff around. I find it to be really like that massively. Like, especially, especially just like this, when, I, like when I'm in the room doing the Shakespeare stuff with the audience and, and, I, and, I, and I've got my, my kind of set stuff that I do with them, which which is the illusion of spontaneity, because it's kind of call and response based, and it's based upon their answers, which are very just little modules that can slot into these beautiful things that I've prearranged. I made the lights do that. That's <laughs> all me. The raw power. Yeah, the raw power. <laughs> this, I'm if dangerous. Only, stay away from me. Now, if only it was like this the entire time. <laughs> yeah. Got here early and everything. Um, yeah. So you so, say, yeah, and it is. It, I found it very, very similar to doing stand up in, in in that sense. Insofar as that, just over time, your your organic sense of the audience and just how to sort of control them in the space and how to when to, when to let them learn, when to let them loose and when to seize control and yeah. when to be like no, pay attention to me and then now you can say your thing yeah, like, <laughs> and, and, like no come and, this way now but gradually 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 that just gets leaner and leaner and leaner over time and and, and eventually and then, and then you have a really great night and it's fantastic and then and then you have just a, an absolute trash night where your your magic doesn't work <laughs> and you're like this is so annoying and then you're like right back to the drawing board and then <laughs> <laughs> and it's like this, and, you're, and then you get really depressed in the bar afterwards, and you're like, I did killed last night. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I think it's for me, I think it's really like stand up in that sense. Oh, terrific. And do you have a favourite of your characters to play? I mean, <laughs> only one of them speaks. <laughs> Fair point. <laughs> But um, yeah, obviously Shakespeare is my favourite. But it, that, but to, to give to give credit to the side men, it is fun. It is fun being the side men. Just just um, is it based on the reaction of everyone else? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, because when you walk out there and people are and you and you and people run run fleeing from you, <laughs> it's really nice. And then small children with sonic screwdrivers try and stop you, and then you can kind of make their day by being stopped by oh, them. And being like, no, no, yes. and that's really cool. That's a lovely thing. To One of the most fun things on this show has been. So I used to also operate a, a Dalek. Um, at one point as well, actually sit in it and pilot it. I don't think that's a spoiler. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they're on the posters. Yeah, and, and, um, turn up inevitably. <laughs> <laughs> there might even be one in the room. <laughs> um, they'd, be, they'd be rising if they didn't. Yeah. <laughs> there, there is nothing more fun 
than, than when you're in a Dalek and an audience member doesn't think they have been seen and then you just swivel the eye stalk oh. around yeah. and just dosh. The number yeah, of scream, yeah, just delightful fun, because I'm a sadist. <laughs> yeah, that'll do it. I mean, <laughs> again, I'm going to try and avoid spoilers as I say it, but when I was here last, uh, the, the Dalek came out, and I was fully looking the complete wrong way. And mm. it, <laughs> it, was a, it was a case in like a horror movie where someone was like tapping me on the shoulder, like, look around, look around. I was like, what? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> and it was just in, oh my God. So... Keep your eyes peeled, is what I will say there. But um, on the tracks of like the kids playing with the Sonic and, and all those little funny moments, um, one thing I've come to understand is, as an actor, it's all about making uh, uh, just the guests' day in their own special way. Yeah, yeah, so it. that must come out with some weird, funny stories, whether it be with other cast members or with uh, or with certain guests. Yeah, I mean, like there was like some people. For some reason, people come into my room as Shakespeare. They come into my room with a lot of, a lot of like their personal research that they've done. And occasionally, there'll be some, there'll be some very sort of this lovely silver-haired woman and a pashmina who knows a lot about Shakespeare. <laughs> <laughs> You're being the best somewhere. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, and I was just and I was ushering some people out of my room, and she turned around and confronted me quite gleefully. It was like, so what was it like when you got done for poaching? And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, what was it like? I, I, don't, I didn't. I didn't know. I, I, I didn't know. I was just like. I was just a bit. But then, I, yeah. Then I started improvising and being upset about it, being annoyed that I've been caught with a trout down my britches. <laughs> <laughs> which you know, which I, I don't know if that's. Tr- I don't know if that's true about wow. Shakespeare, but it was true. That Fact night. check that. He's not going to sue us for libel. I think he's we're not, all right. No, he's not. Yeah, we'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> Bless him. Uh, but yeah, so, so 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 stuff like that's really lovely when when the audience comes with their attachment to a character and they and you feel them engage that extra point more and then you feel like all right okay i've got to dig deep here and then <laughs> get out the actual stuff in your sort of character utility belt <laughs> in fact, actually considering mm. shakespeare is one of those characters where it's kind of hard to find him mm. i bet she was proper chuffed she walked in the room like ah oh, yes yeah, swiveling her wine <laughs> yes you're in trouble now actor i do get, I do get a lot of wine swivelers it's really it's true there's a very imperious attitude that happens like real uh, it's a real season ticket to stratford types you know yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> well, if I can come around tonight, I'm going to try and hunt you down and just, and just I'm going to Google some Shakespeare facts. You won't, you won't find me tonight. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm sniping that tonight. Ah, <laughs> so I, I, darn. I will find you. It's going to be tricky. If you see someone in the show tonight just yelling Shakespeare trivia at a Cyberman. <laughs> 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 to be or what? <laughs> <laughs> well, how about you? So I always... Um, Actually, I suppose you don't get a lot of interaction with the crowd. Not as much. I mean, yeah, so Brian, obviously, he kind of gets his group at the start of that section of the show and then kind of mother ducks them around for the rest of the wave, pretty much. So, it, you know, you can, your, people can join on to Brian's wave, but it's generally it's quite, quite small and quite contained. But I really enjoy... One of my favourite things to ask is Brian, who obviously, for those that know the character, will know that he kind of relishes his role as an assassin um, and one of my favourite things to do is to ask my group what are your preferred methods of assassination and quite often they'll say you know oh, blaster or <laughs> dagger or something like that and there was one um, there was one child who was probably too small for me to be even asking this question now that I think about it but the this can't have been older than seven came out with the most violent terrifying <laughs> Genuinely bone-chilling method of assassination I've ever heard, and even I, as Brian, was genuinely terrified. And I said to you know the grown-up that this person was with, I said, "Excuse me, is this your son?" Said, yes, yes. Congratulations. Your, your progeny is quite the fledgling psychopath. I imagine you are very proud, and his teachers are very worried. And it was just this kid had this maniacal glint in his eye. And I have never forgotten it since. It will haunt me until the day I die. What's the method again? It was something to do with... It was involved... You, this might not even go on the channel. You're yeah. going to have to do a lot of bleeping we'll here. We'll see. But it was to do with making them drink petrol to the point where they would throw up all over their clothes and also on the floor. You then light the petrol and then the petrol ignites, burns up all the way up their clothes and then on their skin and down into their throat and they basically burn themselves alive from the inside just from you throwing a match onto the floor. And I, it was a good job I was wearing an oud mask because I was sat there going... Yeah. Meanwhile, Brian is sort of nodding quite sagely, but James inside the mask is, is traumatised. Oh my God. So, uh, yes, oh, just, just remarkable. Yeah, so so if, if you're out there, 
Doctor well Who done. Brian audience member, you have successfully traumatised me. All the respect in the world to you. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you, imagine if he does watch that and he just comments like, good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's I what I was know. going for. <laughs> So that's, that's a, that, was a, that was a highlight of mine, yeah. certainly. That sounds amazing. <laughs> but uh, I've got one final question. Mm. And I, in my notes, I've just written it as one word, vanity. Mm. Now, funny story. Uh, a couple months back, before I'd even seen the show proper, I actually put my CV in to try and get an audition. Mm -hmm. I got ghosted, but that's fine. I'm not bitter. Welcome to the world of acting. No. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, yeah, that's, yeah. Anyway, but um, I've come here, and you've interacted with me a bit. If there was a character that I would be best for, who would it be? Mm. I will say I'm not very well, known, well versed in Shakespeare, so maybe not that. <laughs> maybe not Shakespeare. <laughs> um, uh, I, mean, you, I mean, you've got your lab coat on, so you're rocking quite Unity vibes at the moment as is, so it, it feels quite Unity to me. Someone in Unit, maybe? Yeah, or, I mean, everyone has to double, so we could go Unit Scientist, we could also go, I see the beige chucks down the bottom there, well done, and I see the, the quite tannish hairstyle as well, so we have these characters that are called Time Lord Guides, mm -hmm. who are Time Lords, and their job is to guide the audience around and they are, in many ways, they are like the Doctor. They're, they're not the Doctor. They're not the Doctor. But they're no. they're they kind of like are, the Doctor. That confused me. The extremely copyrighted figure of the Doctor. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so they're, they're sort of the Aldi versions of the Doctor. Really, <laughs> it's if you, if you bought the Doctor on Wish, that's sort of what you... <laughs> exactly, yeah. That's, that's, that's sort of what they are. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I, I think you are, you are giving... Um, some wonderful Time Lord Guide energy as well, Ooh. where all of the costumes of our TLGs have little nods to Doctor's past, including from, you know, Curse of the Fatal Death and that things like that. That was my favourite <laughs> Yeah. So, I, I reckon with the, with the chucks yeah. and their hair, we are pretty much yeah, on the route. TLG, yeah, 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 well, so does it help if I can do the voice? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Everyone can do a bit of tenant, can't they? Like, it's too easy. It's too easy not to. But yes, thank you for coming on. It's been a pleasure. I mean, I say coming on. I came to you. It's very convenient. You're just at work. I've just barged in with a camera and said, hey. It's nice to come into work early. Gets, you know, sort of, it gets me out of home to walk the dog. It's nice. <laughs> That's fair. Well, I do have a little gift for you, actually. Oh, no. I do. I do. I'm very excited. Oh, that's what the bag is for. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! You absolute superstar! Thank, thank you so much. So sweet, but thank you. Oh, I forgot to fill the other two. <laughs> I, I, there we go. I did that with the others. Thank you. So much Which is very good. Because our show is absolutely loaded with Easter eggs. Hey! <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's um, the perfect way to do it. Doctor Who community show. Thank you so much. Like, share, and subscribe, you bunch of Huns. Yes! Yeah.